Thank you for the opportunity to participate in the gastrointestinal endoscopy author interview series. My name is Shabana Pasha, and I'm an associate professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And my name is Samir Islam, and I'm a third year gastroenterology fellow at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Today we would like to offer some insight into our article entitled The Evaluation and Management of Small Bowel Tumors in the Era of Deep Enteroscopy, which is published in this month's issue of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. Our goal is to provide practicing gastroenterologists a roadmap and strategy for the evaluation and management of small bowel tumors. The reported incidence of small bowel tumors has increased significantly in the last few years. Previously, gastroenterologists were limited in their ability to detect small bowel tumors. This was due to a lack of adequate endoscopic and radiologic tools. Now with the development of capsule endoscopy and device-assisted enteroscopy, gastroenterologists are at the forefront in the diagnosis and management of these patients. Despite these developments, however, there is currently limited literature available to guide gastroenterologists to use these tools effectively. Our goal is to provide a comprehensive strategy for evaluation of patients who present with a suspected small bowel tumor. Our review article summarizes the major developments in the diagnosis and management of small bowel tumors. The different modalities that have recently emerged are radiographic imaging, such as MR and CT enterography or enterocolysis, and deep enteroscopy tools, including capsule endoscopy, balloon assisted enteroscopy, and spiral enteroscopy. Each of these modalities have their own unique advantages and disadvantages. As one of the earliest modalities for evaluating small bowel tumors, push enteroscopy has the advantage of being commonly available for gastroenterologists with no additional training. However, this modality now has a limited role due to the inability to reach or detect lesions beyond the proximal jejunum. Video capsule endoscopy is a safe, non-invasive means to evaluate the entire small intestine. It can help determine the extent of tumor involvement and also provide an estimation of location. However, the test is purely diagnostic and there's a risk of capsule retention in patients with underlying small bowel obstruction. Additionally, capsule endoscopy is not a perfect test as there are reports of missed lesions that have been found on other modalities. Lastly, there can be false positive findings on the test that may lead to unnecessary interventions. Enterography, both CT and MR, allows the detection of small bowel tumors and allows for extra luminal visualization for local invasion and metastasis. One of the limits of CT enterography, however, is the exposure to ionizing radiation. MR enterography mitigates that concern, but it may be more expensive, not widely available, and contraindicated in patients with metal devices. Enterocolysis, both CT and MR, allows small bowel visualization similar to enterography. This modality differs by the placement of a nasal jejunal tube. This allows adequate distension of the small intestine, but can be uncomfortable for patients to have. The choice for either enterography or enterocolysis should be determined by local area expertise and comfort. Device-assisted enteroscopy techniques allow both diagnostic evaluation and therapy. These procedures are time-consuming, relatively invasive, and often require additional personnel and anesthesia. Among the device-assisted enteroscopy techniques, double balloon enteroscopy has the highest rate of total enteroscopy. However, there appears to be no difference in the diagnostic and therapeutic yield with these tools. Based on the available literature, we propose an algorithm for evaluating patients with a suspected small bowel tumor. We recommend initial evaluation with capsule endoscopy in patients presenting with obscure GI bleeding and CT or MR imaging in patients who present with obstructive symptoms. These non-invasive tests can then serve as a screening tool to plan further management, including the route of device-assisted enteroscopy or surgery. Device-assisted enteroscopy is then useful for confirmation of diagnosis, localization of the tumor, and for performance of other therapeutics, including polypectomy. It may also have a role in patients who have negative non-invasive testing, but a high clinical suspicion for a tumor. And finally, surgery continues to remain the mainstay in the definitive management of most small bowel tumors. We hope that our review and algorithmic approach will improve the evaluation and management of patients with small bowel tumors. 
Future research on this topic should focus on the long-term outcomes and survival due to earlier detection of small bowel tumors with these techniques. We would like to thank our co-authors at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. It is an honor to have our article featured in GIE.